Hey everyone, this is Tim Swanson with the Boston Outdoor School. I'm out here in the beautiful, beautiful woods, uh, and I figured I'd bring you along my journey to try to make a bow drill set and uh, get a friction fire going. When I come out into the woods, I always just like to honor uh, the original inhabitants here, the human inhabitants, and I'm on Wabanaki territory. Um, and I, I, I was born here, but my ancestors and myself, I'm not native here, so when I do come out in the woods, I really, really, really try to respect the land um, and all living things out here as well. So that's really the first step um, to anything I do in the woods. Um, and I, and I, honor, I honor the ancestors of the land by making sure that I'm not cutting down live trees and I'm picking up trash and I'm just making sure I tread lightly. So when I do want to gather materials, I actually look for uh, things like this. So this tree fell, uh, looks like from a natural cause, probably by wind. It's a very windy day today. So we'll look all the way down here. It's actually technically alive, right? Like there's still green leaves, so it, it fell very fresh, but it is on its way out. So these are the types of trees I like to gather things from. So I believe I can find a really good bow from this tree. So let me just look around here and see what I can find. So I'm actually gonna uh, go after this branch right here. So first thing, clear off all the little loose branches. I always cut a branch uh, towards the tip first because this end is gonna support it as I cut it on both ends. But if I cut here, then move up here, I'd, then I'd have a loose branch. So this actually isn't going to be any part of my bow drill, but it's an important tool for things I'm looking for later. All right, and there's nothing fancy to this at all. What I did is just um, a uh, kind of like a chisel tip and just a good comfortable, it's probably my armpit to my wrist in length. So now I'm going to look for something that will actually help me. So before I do that, I'm actually gonna sheath my knife um, and look for a good curved stick. Hypothetically, any stick would work. I just want one. Ooh, there's a nice one right there. Let's go take a peek. Now, I like the looks of this stick here. It's nice and curved. Get my foot out of the way. And there we go. Nice curved bow for my bow drill. Nothing too fancy. 
just to give you guys a better close up of my bow here. Um, armpit to fingertips is a good length for your bow. Just something with a slight curve. I never really go for anything too bendy. Um, I like a good solid piece of wood. So that's going to be a nice one. Now you'll notice I'm using this big chopping knife, right? Uh, no one's going to be carrying this around the woods usually, right? I, I do this all the time. So I like to, um, have something to work with on a, on a larger scale. But if you don't have a big knife, all right, something like that, like a four inch blade. Um, if you want to, if I take this and swing it, I'm really not going to get that, that deep into things. Okay. So I'm going after my handhold now. One trick is this is the stick I cut down, uh, for the secret tool later, but I can actually use it for multiple things. If I don't have a large knife, I can actually use this as long as my smaller knife is strong. Okay. This is called batoning. <clears throat> All right, when I get down, I'll hit it a couple more times. Then I can just break that off. So that's what I'm looking for right there. Okay, so I'm going to take this, sharpen A. I'm sorry, I'm not going to sharpen anything. I'm going to um, flatten it out. I'm going to take that. I'm going to use proper knife safety, not cut towards myself. And I am going to make a little divot in there. Okay, so I'm going to sheath my knife. So now I have my handhold that's going to go on top of my spindle. And I have my bow. Both are from the same wood. This is a red maple that I found that was naturally fallen recently. Technically, it's still alive and, and green, but it's on its way out. So I'm making sure that I'm sustainably gathering materials. The next materials I gather have to be dead wood. And I'm looking for dead wood that is still standing with the bark on it. That's for my spindle and my baseboard. And hopefully I can find them from the same tree. And like I said previously, I, I'm on the trail now and I always go off trail. Um, I'm going to leave no trace master educator. And if you aren't familiar with leave no trace principles, I encourage you to look them up. Um, and practicing survival skills kind of goes against many of the leave no trace principles. So that's why we always want to come out and what leave no trace is, is it's, mostly meant for visiting national parks, things with really high traffic, but I actually have private uh, land use permission that I asked for. And, uh, and, and I have permission to do these things on privately owned land. So, um, you know, I'm allowed to do this. So you have to make sure that you check all the laws and regulations of where you're going, or if you know somebody with some land, uh, or, you know, conservation commissions, conservation trusts, things like that. Um, some places it's illegal to, to do this stuff. So make sure you always keep that in mind, especially with foraging or um, even hunting, really, right? You're always welcome to hike in the woods usually, but gathering vegetation and stuff, you need special permission. Uh, but when I do travel off trail, one of the leave no trace principles is travel and camp on durable surfaces, okay? Now, when I look out at these woods, generally, this is a durable surface. There's a lot of small plants and they're alive and I don't want to go and crush them. And if I had a big parade of people out here, I'd crush them. See how the trail is that impacted area right in front of us in the center of the screen. There's no plants. That's really what we want to travel on. But usually to find the good stuff, we got to, we got to go off trail. Um, couple quick things about traveling off trail is try to keep a bird's eye view of where you are. Um, and you know, sometimes I'll go out and I'll just get a little turned around and I'll eventually come back to where I was. So it's funny, you'll drop me off in the city. I couldn't find you the next block over, but you dropped me off in the woods and, uh, I seem to be pretty spot on with my navigation. So it's really interesting. I think different people's minds work different ways 
where the city seems to be more grid oriented and the woods is kind of just like a, a random scatter of things. So if you're scatterbrained like me and always thinking stuff, so you might have an easier time out in the woods. See, so when I gather materials, I'm actually looking for usually stuff like this. See how this is a tree that fell and there's still leaves on it. So this means the branch fell when it was alive, but now it's pretty much dead. And if a branch falls, you know, when I say it's alive, I mean that it's still green. Um, it's kind of a philosophical question whether or not, uh, or uh, when does a plant actually die, right? Is it right when you cut it down? Is it after it decomposed? Is it any alive at all, right? Um, so this is a piece of oak. I actually don't need anything from this currently. I'm looking for um, a dead standing hemlock or pine. So let's go find something like that. All right, I know it doesn't look like much on the camera, but this, this is everything right here. So I find uh, trees like this. Uh, this one actually still has uh, some bark on it, but some removed. So what I'm gonna do is just chop this. This is gonna be my spindle for my bow drill set. So do you notice how there's branches here and branches there? I'm gonna cut in between those and those are going to be that hopefully is going to be my spindle so remember i cut uh towards the tip first yeah see this wood i didn't even cut it i just broke it so we'll see what happens no it looks like it's it should be okay that's nice and uh nice and dry so let's take that and um we'll see if we can go find a baseboard So I have my, uh, let me clear all that out. So here's my spindle here, okay? So um, and there is actually, there's some sap in there. And I don't necessarily want that, but that might be the actual, uh, that might actually be the um, top of my spindle to go in my handhold. So I'm gonna sharpen this. Always cut away from yourself when you use knives. And this big knife is pretty overkill, but I just, um, I like it because it's a good multi-purpose uh, knife here. I'm gonna cut all the bark off. You don't have to get too uh, surgical about it, just whatever works. Fling some chips at you. All right, and I'm gonna just use the chopping momentum of this blade to sharpen that tip up. Awesome, let's just touch that up a bit. Cool, I'm liking it. That looks good. I'm gonna make sure it's really uh, symmetrical throughout, nicely carved. Make sure there's no, um, you know, uh, sharp edges or anything like that, because I'm gonna actually try to make some natural cordage to make this. So this is what I'm looking for, for a bow drill spindle, okay? That's why I call this the hang loose, right? Because we don't have a, a measuring tape in the woods. Um, so about, so pinky to uh, thumb, that's a perfect size for me. Everybody might be different. I'm used to using a little bit shorter because as you use these, they shorten up. So um, usually in like my kit that I bring to classes and stuff, it's all, uh, it's all shorter spindles, but uh, I like longer ones. They work pretty well. So this is um, some pine. Uh, 
It does smell a little sappy, so I am worried about that because what the sap is going to do is it's actually going to lubricate my set instead of create friction when I go for a friction fire. But let's take that and we're actually going to see if we can get a baseboard from this same piece of wood. All right, so I'm lower down on the pine that I got my spindle from. So I'm going to cut here uh, and we're going to see if um, this will be a good baseboard. I just don't want it to be sappy. So let's just experiment and see how that will work out. Oh yeah, that's looking awesome. I like that. That looks good. So remember how I said always go towards the tip when you cut because now I have a free a freestanding uh, piece of wood here. But let's see. Um, let's see how we do. All right, so we have this wood. Now what I'm going to do is put this here and I'm going to split it. with my secret stick here that I that I made. Now I'm looking for two flat sides like that. All right. And since this is just a kind of a survival uh, bow drill, I don't need a large space on it. I just need a really good workable space for one, two, maybe three holes depending on how I do with fire starting. So let's whittle that off, make it nice and straight and flat this side too. Okay, I'm gonna clean up that edge. And then just for fun, I'm gonna clean up that edge as well. All right, so that's good. Let me sheath my knife. Okay, so this is gonna be my baseboard. It's nothing pretty at all. Um, it just needs to work, right? Um, they're surviving in style and then they're surviving and just getting things to work. And I like to just get things to work and that's pretty, that's stylish enough. So, cause now I'll have time to go do other things instead of making this pretty. Uh, this is my workable area right here, nice and flat. So I'm going to step on it on this end and hopefully be able to get a, a, uh, a uh, coal with this. Well, moth trail now. So this is the fun, the fun part. Um, what I did is I went down a trail and I know that there's a trail uh, that intersects probably my path that I'm walking now. Um, and I'm actually on a animal trail, um, probably a deer trail, but probably used by other animals. Um, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but it's, um, here, let me just show you. There's some tracks hanging out here. Um, there's also some like old tire ruts too um, that I just came up to. So I'm always like looking around, right? So um, when I come out in the woods, I always have a kind of like a theme of what I'm going to do, right? So, okay, so I'm making a fire video right now, right? Like I want to make a bow drill fire from the landscape using all natural materials with just my knife. All right. Yeah, there's some nice deer tracks there. See, but I come out and I see some deer tracks. So cool. I'm going to look at the deer tracks. Now everyone has a different level of comfort uh, coming out in the woods, right? Some of us have a lot of experience. Some of us have zero experience and we've never actually been out in like woods. Um, or maybe we've never even been alone. And that's okay. Everyone comes from a different background. Oh, geez, there's a frog. Everyone comes from a different background. Everyone comes from a different place uh, and different experiences. Um, I very much enjoy traveling off trail 
because I tend to find more, right? Every now and then I'll find a, a deer antler or a turtle shell or um, really what I'm looking for right now is some uh, chicken of the woods mushroom, to be honest with you. Um, I'm hoping to stumble across that on some sort of a dead hardwood. Um, now, so check this out, right? So this is all green over here. Watch how the environment just changes. And then it just turns into a evergreen hemlock forest, which is exactly what I'm looking for right now because there is a fire tool that I need. It is the second to last thing that I need. Um, actually, you know what, while I'm here, let me show you this. So I like to gather these really fine scraggly branches uh, for fire starting, okay? So I'm just gonna take a couple off. Now I am pulling branches off the tree, right? These are all dead, okay? So this is an evergreen tree that should have needles. If you were going after some hardwood trees, you just need to make sure that it's not just a deciduous tree that lost its leaves. Just because it doesn't have leaves doesn't mean that it's um, dead, right? If it still has leaves, it's definitely alive, but if it, um, if it loses its leaves, it could be alive. And we're in September now, so we're gonna start getting into that time of year when we start losing leaves. Uh, okay, so that's what I got. So I'm gonna hang on to that. And we are going to find a place to find a rope for our bow so that we may start a bow drill fire. Okay, so my secret stick. The original intention for this stick was to be a digging stick, all right? Okay, so now I'm in an evergreen, right? Like a hemlock, eastern hemlock, Suga canadensis stand. So I dig down, and yes, I am disturbing the ground. I always wanna make sure I spread out my impact, okay? Now I dig until my stick stops, because that means there might be a little rootlet that's stopping it. Oh man, I love the smell of that. Oh, it smells really good, okay. Uh, so now, oh, those are way too thin. Hang on, let me dig down a little bit. I don't need to dig far, because what they do is they travel. So I'm gonna cover that spot back up and I'm gonna look in a different spot. Oh, that might be a good one right there. Let's see. All right, so I found a pretty good one. You probably can't see it right now, but let me just... Okay, so you see that digging stick? It's just like a shovel. It's just a, a really simple tip. And I just stab that in the ground and pull the earth towards me. Obviously, it's not as good as a shovel, but I actually like these more because it's not like I'm digging a big hole and destroying everything with a shovel. They tend to chop through things. But the digging stick, see now that's way too thick, but this one might be okay. So let's follow this one here. Oh, oh, might be all right. It's a little wavy, but we'll see. We will see. <sighs> now, sometimes we gotta, so this is what I'm going for right here is this root, and I need it to be about three or four feet. And as I do this, I'll find a couple of them because they tend to break as I use them. But I am finding a couple of them, which is good. Now, I feel like this always takes the, the longest amount of time. Uh, if you have a shoelace or something or... Um, you know, like those um, those strings in your hoodie. Those work pretty well. 
and obviously it will save you a lot of time to bring rope out in the woods. But I actually really enjoy doing it this way because this is kind of the, the natural way and it's a little bit more rewarding for me because I really like to um, start a fire just from the landscape, just from you know a knife or even no knife, right? Like what if we didn't have a knife and we needed to start a fire, what would we do? But today I have a knife, so I'm gonna use it. Now if we can, we can stand up and we can uh, pull the root as long as it's strong. It won't necessarily break. So there's one, it broke. Uh, it's a little thicker than what I want, but maybe, maybe it'll work, okay? So let's just put that off to the side. Maybe I'll use that as my first one, uh, cause I want like a, the most perfect one as my main rope, which this one looks like it might be it right here. Cause I like the thickness of this. Now these only work when they're wet all right, and I'm always looking around the woods just, just to uh, keep aware because I don't want to miss anything. I'm not being paranoid. I'm always like <laughs> looking around. It freaks people out too because they think I'm just seeing all these animals. But I wish I was seeing all these animals. But me talking is scaring them all away. A couple chipmunks, but. Now, this one, I don't necessarily want to stand up and just rip it out of the ground because I feel like this one's a little bit lower um, than some other roots. So if I just stood up and ripped it up, I'd probably break it. Oh man, it's almost there. I just want to, I want to get this in one piece. It seems like it just keeps weaving with everything else though. It's really good to channel your inner mole here and dig. There we go, there's a nice big root that's, this one's growing under. All right, so there we go. That's what I'm looking for right there, okay? Is a nice pliable, and check this out. See, if that's gonna wrap around my spindle, I want it to really, really, really be able to turn, all right? So now what I'm gonna do is peel it, because it does have bark on it, despite the fact that it's a root, okay? Um, so these all come off, so I just peel that off. Now, a few things. This only works when it's wet, okay? So if you needed to, you could store it underwater, weigh it down with a rock, store it underwater, okay? And I actually usually gather a couple of these because I notice what happens is they tend to break. As I do my fire, Wow, it's beautiful. I don't know if you noticed, but some of those chickies are alarming at probably my presence. But who knows? But they weren't singing right when I came in here, so maybe they're just moving in, or maybe they're uh, letting me know that something's uh, coming, so who knows? Maybe we'll see a bear. It's peaceful out here. Let me show you what I'm doing.
see all this bark taking that off the root. Now if you could, you could take a stick, break it in half, pinch the root, and pull it. Oh, I just broke my uh, stick, so I'm not gonna do that trick. But you can kind of see how that, that came off there, so. All right, back to square one, because that root broke, so now I need to gather another one. It's okay to be angry, but don't let it get you down. Okay, so let's go after this one, actually. This one looks like a pretty good one. Oh, there's one. Maybe that'll work. I'm gonna strip it a little bit more carefully this time. But what I'm gonna do is cover up this area here that I dug up. And if I ever do make an impact, I just wanna make sure I spread it out, right? It's, people seem to get upset about making such a localized impact in the woods. But remember that we chopped down entire forests right, to make those little shopping malls and little centers like that, or even our houses, right? So by connecting with the landscape, we're actually caring about the landscape because, you know, if a decision ever comes down to, you know, if they're going to chop this whole forest down to build a mall or whatever, I'm going to be one of the first people to sit here and defend it, right? So I'm going to... Um, to enjoy this land and respect it, but I'm also going to defend it if the time ever comes where I need to. So yes, I am making an impact, but um, you know, I, I spread it out and I, uh, I just make sure I'm doing it ethically and responsibly. I might touch up the root on a tree and do this and see if I can get some of the bark off of that root. All right, so here we go. I might just get all those little bits off and strip all that bark off. There we go, that's what we want, that white inner core. That white woody inner core. See that? Look how beautiful that is. Now these roots dry and then they get stiff and really brittle. So I have a bow that I made uh, in the past with a root cord. And when I say bow, I don't mean an archery bow. I mean a fire bow for doing the bow drill. And uh, it still has the root on it, but it's, I can't use it anymore because it's too uh, brittle. I just kind of keep it as a, a memory of the fire I started. It was a little solo survival trip I went on. All right, so there we go, it's a stripped 
rootlet, evergreen rootlet. Now, before I make a fire, I always make sure that safety is a priority, okay? I'm in a good spot. There's not a lot of dead branches directly overhead. Um, and I'm also going to have a, a small fire. Maybe I'll heat up a cup of water, make some pine tea. So I scrape away a lot of the leaf debris here, okay? I always make sure I have water on hand. Now, if I was going to be here for a long time, I would um, scrape all these leaf, this leaf debris like 15 feet away. All right. Oh, look at that. That's cool. Still in there. I just found a snail shell. Sweet. Just dug that up. It has some weight to it, so there might be a snail in there. I don't know, but it's, it looks empty. There's a little male pine cone in there, but we'll put the snail off to the side just in case. All right, so let's do a recap. So I have my bow, okay? Now this is just a, a curved stick. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna carve a little bit of a, a notch in this so that the root won't slip up and down the stick when I tie it on, all right? Something simple, I'm gonna tie a clove hitch. Okay, just something little like that, no big deal. And then I'm actually just gonna use that branch as a, um, a, uh, a place to tie my root on. So let me just see if this will work. So I'm going to tie a clove hitch. I wrap it around. I wrap it around again, but I make an X. Once, and then on the third time around, I'm actually going to put the stick between the X. I'm, I'm sorry, I put the edge of the root, the end of the root between both of those pieces, but all the way on the bottom. And then I have a clove hitch, all right? That's the best knot for natural cordage. I just want to make sure I have a little bit of a tail end. And I'll tighten that up. Okay. And I'll bring it down. I'll give it a little bit of slack. And I'm on this end. And I just have not enough, so I'm actually just going to see if I can put the clove hitch right there. Make it a little bit shorter. And we'll see what happens with this here. All right. So now what I do is I make sure that my spindle can be wrapped, can be wrapped inside without it breaking. So see that it's really tight. I need to loosen it just a little bit. This, these uh, roots are, um, they work, they're strong, but they can still snap. So that's why I try to have, when I do my fire, I just try to have an area. That's what we want right there, okay? All right. So now what I'm gonna do is, okay, so you ready? Handhold, piece of dead green, uh, I'm sorry. So my handhold is a hardwood, okay? I made a little divot in there. My spindle, piece of dead softwood. The tip of my spindle is gonna go right in there. The other tip of the spindle is gonna go into a hole that I make in my baseboard, which is that right there, okay? I'll make sure I didn't make that too close to the edge. Nope, that's good. So that goes in there. I have my bow which this is kind of like a funky looking bow because I have that root and it was just too short to use the full length of the bow. So let's put that on, all right? And I like to do this on my knife. I always keep my knife in the sheath unless I'm actively using it and I consider this actively using it. All right, let me make sure that that's on camera, yep. 
Okay, so now let's just see if we can get this moving. And every now and then you might run into a... So I noticed my root is uh, slipping a little bit, but it's working, right? I'm getting smoke, but I just wanna make sure that that's tight because um, I'll just waste energy just trying to get it to move if I notice that the, the uh, root is slipping over the spindle as I move the bow. I want it tight enough that it's going to make the spindle move and have enough tension, but I don't want it too tight where I'm gonna run into the issue of the spindle uh, I'm sorry, I don't want it too tight that the root's gonna snap. And it happens. Okay. So let's see what we got here. So what I'm gonna do now is transfer all that dust onto a leaf because I want to save that dust. That stuff's gold, especially when I make um, friction fire with natural cordage. So all that dust gathered around the rim. Now what I want to do is I want to carve a notch, okay? So what that's going to look like, and I actually um, burnt that hole really close to the edge. So I was thinking I almost didn't even need a notch because it kept falling off the edge perfectly, but I'm just going to carve a little notch just to give it a place to all fall. Okay, that's nothing pretty at all, um, but, it, but it should work. So now I have my little piece of cedar here. This is a piece of dry cedar. There's some bark on it. So what I'm gonna do is just scrape off that bark that's on the cedar. Okay, and we'll save that. I'm just gonna put that on my leaf for now. 90 degree angle. See all that light fluffy stuff? That's gonna be ex where my coal goes the very first place my coal goes. Now, if you ever heard of a feather stick, in a way, this is kind of what I'm doing, but I'm not keeping it as a stick. Um, I'm gonna make a bundle of the cedar wood. All right, so I have all that nice, light, fluffy stuff. Look at that, and I might even just take that and break it up a bit, all right? So that's just a little bit, okay? That's the starter. Now what I'm gonna do is very light shavings off my uh, cedar piece there, right on the corner. See, and this is kind of the, the feather stick, right? making little shavings, but I'm gonna take them all off and actually make a ball of it. This is my little trick if I'm in an area where I don't have a lot of, uh, you know, cattail fluff or even a lot of cedar bark or uh, dry grass, right? I'm in like a very moist evergreen forest. And actually in doing this, I'm actually, um, trying to make a perfect cylinder out of this piece of wood because um, I'm gonna make another bow drill spindle out of it. All that is good, good, good stuff, okay? 
So I'm starting to build my tinder bundle here. Just cut that off. Maybe I'll go the other way and whittle off those shavings. Make little thicker pieces. Now, if I had a bandana or something, uh, it would probably be a little bit more wise to put that on your uh, bandana just to keep it off the ground. Uh, if you had a hat, you know, or even an extra layer or something, just lay it on the ground um, just to collect all those easily. But I'm happy just putting them on the ground for now. It hasn't rained in a little bit, so the ground's not too wet. See, I'm always thinking forward. I'm making a cylinder right now uh, for another bow drill spindle. So even though I'm working on one project, I'm always thinking about the next project. This knife is fairly new to me, so I'm also getting the practice using this. All right, so that's probably enough shavings. So I'm going to put my knife away. Balance it up against my pack basket there. I'm going to put this piece of wood away. If I'm not actively using a tool, I like to just put it away and make sure it's organized. All right, so there's my tinder bundle. If I get a coal, I'm very confident that um, that'll work. But confidence is different than being cocky. So I'm always open to the fact that things happen and it may never work. But look at that. That's what I'm looking for right there when I whittle is little, little uh, um, wood, wood curls. Whittle little. Whittle little wood curls. Say that 10 times fast. Okay. So now I think I'm in a good position to do it. So let's see what happens. Just want to make sure that root is tight, but not too tight. And again, I'm always being thankful and respectful of fire. I always, always, always want to be safe with fire. That root's slipping a little bit, but um, I'm going to take this away and just look at my pile there real quick because it was smoking, but it's actually going to go out because I didn't have enough heat. I had some heat where it was smoking, but I'm just going to tighten up that root. And you'll notice as you use these roots, uh, and, you know, like I said, if you just have a piece of rope, that's going to be a lot easier. Um, but 
you know, this is a bow drill off the landscape video, so I want to make sure that I'm doing this, doing this uh, from all landscape materials. Obviously, with the exception of, uh, oh, look at that. So that broke. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go get another route. I'm going to save the uh, camera time and not uh, show you that because I already did. Save this dust. Okay, all the dust that accumulates there. Let me get that piece out. Save that dust. Don't blow it away and make sure that you have it uh, in an area where the wind's not going to blow it away. All right, so I have a new rootlet on my stick. I'm actually just going to wrap this around because it's actually a really long one. I got a good long one. So I can use the full length of the bow. And if it does break, depending on where it breaks, I might be able to use this root a second time. So there it is, nice and loose. I have my spindle. Um, I kept my dust. So let's see what happens. This root feels a little loose, so I'm just gonna do a couple passes and see if it'll if it'll hold up. Yeah, see how it's slipping? Hang on one sec, I'm gonna fix that real quick. It's all about persevering, being patient, right? And I mean, I'm well fed and well hydrated right now. And if this doesn't work, I can just go home. So when you do practice, practice in a situation like that, okay? Don't just watch this and then go out in the woods, get lost, and think that you can do this. Everything takes practice, okay? So I'm just going to go nice and slow with this. I don't want to break the root. And just get it moving. Oh, there it goes. It broke again. Hang on a sec. Let me fix this. to just shut up there and focus. I don't know if I have a coal. Oh, yes, I do. I totally have a coal. All right. <laughs> I almost just laughed and blew it out. So check that out, okay? It's smoking on its own. Let me blow on it so you can see. Ready? And there's no trickery there. I just used a root. That was awesome. Okay, so look at that with a knife and not much else. You can find everything. Oh, that was awesome. You can find everything to start a fire, okay, in the woods as long as you practice, connect, appreciate, and give thanks. You can do it. So let's see if we can blow this into a flame because 
You know, they say where there's smoke, there's fire, but they're lying because there's smoke and there's not any fire yet. So, whew. All right, so here's what I do. I go very, very careful. All right, I put that in my tinder bundle there. And I, I do have time, okay? So don't freak out when you get the coal. I mean, yeah, freak out and appreciate it and be proud of yourself. All right, let me come down here so you can see. ground Whew. All right, now one stick at a time. Go nice and easy. I'm still not out of the, uh, I'm still, I still wanna make sure that I'm within comfortable, uh, I'm sorry, I still wanna make sure that I'm being very safe because it's not at a point really right now where I can just walk away and start throwing big things on. I just want to make sure that I'm aware, okay? I think it's safe to say now that it's going, all right? I can throw some, some on, I can just breathe now. Okay, as soon as you get that coal, you really need to just dedicate your entire life and mindset into making sure uh, that that fire is at a point where you can start putting thicker stuff on like this. In the woods, I don't do, I mean, this is just like a nice little fire. I don't do anything big, all right? Um, just something to enjoy it. Uh, you know, don't give too much smoke off unless you need some bugs and things and and don't, um, don't burn anything uh, too big that you can't put out. Now, there's really only one way to celebrate this, and that's to enjoy a cup of tea by your fire that you started with all natural materials. So I'm just gonna put that right there, right on the coals, and just keep the fire going around it, and uh, heat that up, <coughs> and add some uh, hemlock needles to it.
So although I have no flame, the coals are still going strong under that cup. But what I'm going to do actually is uh, add my eastern hemlock needles. Now you'll hear about hemlock being a poisonous plant. That is a herbaceous plant, not an evergreen tree, okay? So what I do actually is bruise those up and then I add those in. See that water's uh, steaming and nice and uh, a little bubbly. So I'm gonna add those in. Oh yeah, that's hot. And just put a cap on it and uh, let that sit for a little bit. And these wants to stick out of there. Right away, there we go. So I'm actually going to take that off, let it steep, let it cool, and now for fire safety, I'm going to just burn all these, and then I'm going to um, add a bunch of water to that and douse it and make sure it's out before I leave. All right, so now that we're down pretty much to a bed of coals, I'm going to douse my fire. And I want to I want to use too much water, okay? I want to make sure it's all out. And what I do is I sit there for 10 minutes and I make sure that there's no smoke, no coals, and that it's no longer warm. And a day when you get to go home smelling like campfire smoke, covered in leaves and dirt, is always a good day. <laughs> Especially with a belly full of Eastern Hemlock tea. Oh, that's good stuff. That's really good. It's hot, but it's good stuff. Please, please, please remember to respect fire. Respect the land that you're using. Respect the ancestors of that land. The animals, the plants, fungi fungi, right? And uh, always make sure you keep your fire small, please. That is the one thing I can ask of everybody is to just make sure you keep your fire small. Wildfires are happening uh, on the West Coast right now and acres upon acres of habitat is being destroyed um, because of a fire. So please keep them small. Very, very, very rarely does anybody need a large fire. All right, that fire I can boil water on, that fire I can warm my hands up. If this was a winter survival situation, it might be a little bit different, um, and I would make a bigger fire, but I would make sure I do it in a safe place. So with that, good luck. Go get lost in the woods and uh, make your bow drill set. Be safe, guys. I'm Tim Swanson. This is the Boston Outdoor School. Thanks so much.